Welcome, I'm Rogers Anderson, Williamson County Mayor. And as we travel around Williamson County today and hopefully have another interesting show for you to concentrate on, on some of the services that are provided throughout our county, we're very fortunate today to have a director that has been around the Williamson Medical Center and heading up our ambulances for, for many, many years. I hate to call him a seasoned <laughs> veteran. They would say you're old, Alan. But Alan Lovett is here, the director of our <clears throat> ambulance services here in Williamson County. Thanks for being with us. I appreciate you having me. You know, when we have these shows so many times, and of course you're a very familiar face in Williamson County. <laughs> uh, it's, it's not like that. Um, recently I saw a statistic that 48% of the people living in Williamson County now were never born not just in our county, but not in our state. Yes. Forty-eight percent of the people not born in our in our state, and that tells me we've got a lot of people moving in here from different parts of the United States, creating a whole new level of diversity that mm -hmm. we uh, have not seen in many years uh, uh, ever in our particular particular county. But tell us a little bit about Alan. <laughs> Love it and. Where you started from, where you went to school, and and I know you're very proud of some children, and uh, uh, so take us down that journey for a few minutes, and then we'll get into your day-to-day -day operation. <laughs> well, okay. Well, thank you again for the opportunity to be here. Uh, I was actually born in this building, so this is a uh, the apple didn't fall far from the tree in that respect. Um, and so I grew up in Franklin, went to city schools and county schools at, at high school. Back then it was three years. Uh, Franklin High School was my alma mater. Um, um, progressed to, uh, at the time, the, the ambulance service was directly under the county. And mom signed permission slips for me both to join the rescue squad, to volunteer as a firefighter and rescuer. And uh, uh, I was privileged to be able to ride on ambulances in the evenings and on the weekends. Um, uh, so from there, I went to uh, uh, a vocational school at the time was where the EMT program was and uh, then progressed to uh, paramedic. So I started out as a dispatcher um, and then an EMT paramedic supervisor and, and became the director about 11 and a half years ago. Uh, uh, kind of coincided uh, you're becoming county mayor. Uh, uh, but uh, I. And being a native of Franklin, I'm still a resident of Williamson County. I moved to College Grove about 27 years ago, and uh, I've got two children. Uh, my daughter, Rachel, will be 26 in August. Hard to believe. It is hard to believe. <laughs> and uh, my son, Matthew, uh, just turned 16, and he's a uh, sophomore at Page High School, an excellent school. And part of the reason we have so many folks moving in. <laughs> Alan, um for many years, and, and you, you alluded to it as we were, as you were kind of giving a short bow of yourself. Um, our ambulance service here in Williamson County, which covers all of the square miles of Williamson County, not just Franklin, not just Brentwood, and it it has been a program that's put together more systematically today than it was say 20 years ago yes with the growth of people that we have it is important to have an ambulance service and the ambulance service is through Williamson Medical Center which your paycheck comes from the county writes a check once a year to send over to the hospital to help with some of the the costs that are incurred with that so that all residents have that opportunity. Hopefully you never need an ambulance, but right. if you do, uh, one is available. Kind of talk about the program in general, uh, where we are today, then I want to go back and the next, when you finish that, and kind of bring us up, uh, this, this whole memorandum that we, we talk about and the, and the complexities that, that your department has to deal with on a day-to-day -day right. basis. If, with 840 opening up a couple of years ago, we see a lot more activity yes. out on 840 <laughs> from I-65 back over to I-40 going towards Fairview. And when one ambulance goes over there, we don't have an uh, ambulance at every two miles. We have to move and rotate those, and that's right. almost done instant, 
instantly, right on the spot. Talk us through a little of that. Yes, well, just like you, you had uh, referred to the population of the county shifting and how we have so many, uh, so much diversity. Uh, we started, of course, our, our home county to begin with. Uh, there's a lot of folks that are dedicated to service and visionary, so there's a lot that's built in automatically. And that diversity of bringing others into the county has allowed us to look at a number of ways. We're always looking at how we can improve. So when the Williamson County Court established EMS in 1972, uh, at that time the hospital was uh, what about eight years old. Not very old. And so it had been established under the Hill Burton Act as a public facility uh, for the community. And so the, the county court rightly said, you know, these, this is a county system and these are county folks that were county employees for the first decade. But we want to have this in conjunction with the hospital from day one. And so they, they worked cohesively in providing that service. Uh, but everything was based in Franklin. There were only two ambulances at the time. And over time they built up, uh, they, the EMT got established in the state. You need to tell us what I'm initials sorry. are. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, that's emergency medical technician. At the time, it was about an 80-hour course, um, basic first aid, CPR, bandaging, splinting, things like that. And there was a little bit of vehicle rescue in it, but not a lot. Uh, paramedics came about uh, about four years later. And what a paramedic, the, it, it's an enhancement to emergency medical technician. And it adds certain uh, heart monitors and devices to assist in breathing and giving medications for you know various uh, medical issues. Uh, it's more, as they told us, the, the first semester of paramedic school is about the first year of pre-med crammed into one semester and it's pretty intense and it, you go through that program, uh, you do hospital internships and they now do uh, ambulance internships as well and it just gives you a, a, a broader understanding of what you're treating uh, so that you can do a better job treating it and have a few more tools to do it. Uh, and, and Williamson County was one of the front runners in the state for that program. Um, but as medicine became more uh, technical in the pre-hospital environment, uh, we had a number of changes. Uh, um, during that transition, there was also, uh, I believe it was uh, Judge Wilburn Kelly at the time, uh, wanted to decrease response times in Fairview, so a cooperative arrangement between the county, the hospital, and the city of Fairview came up, and we put our first additional ambulance uh, in a substation in Fairview. And then uh, as time progressed, uh, about the time uh, Mr. Ring came in as the county executive, and uh, Ron Joyner had uh, come in to be the hospital administrator, he had experienced some really progressive thinking in Virginia from where he was from on pre-hospital care and how it can be more of a professional integration into the health care service. So they worked out an agreement uh, on EMS's 10-year birthday, if you would, for the hospital to actually manage the county ambulance service on behalf of the county. And um, it was a very interesting agreement and it, it really focused on basically the hospital was able to recover some costs at the time for the administrative piece of it, really integrated uh, the, the care a lot more deeply than it had been before and uh, just basically the county made up the difference for any operating costs that were uh, beyond what they were able to bring in in patient revenues from billing insurance companies, Medicare and such. Um, so as time progressed, um, we started needing more ambulances, more communities got with their commissioners and, and cooperative arrangements in the cities. We then opened a station in Brentwood. Uh, we started putting our first non-24 hours. Uh, the ambulances started on eight hour shifts and then went to the 24 hours on, 48 hours off shift, which was uh, it's pretty much the standard in the U.S. primarily comes from the fire service. Um, but the county said, you know, we need to put some ambulances out where it's great to have this level of care, but if you're not getting it there quick enough, 
uh, you're, you're going to not be able to be as effective in doing it. So we started putting ambulances uh, starting in Brentwood and then we progressed and uh, went to Triune and we moved, we had two ambulances in Franklin, we moved one to downtown so that we'd be on both sides of the city. At the same time, we were one of the pilot projects in the state for our first responder program to send the fire department ahead of the ambulance. Uh, in the cities, you're generally looking at about a four four minute response time, give or take. Uh, and in the county, it's, it's not as extensive because the county is uh, protected by volunteers. But there are, you mentioned numbers, we have grown to, we operate nine 24 hour stations in the county and we have two additional ambulances that are 12 hour units. One, uh, through a cooperative arrangement with the city of Brentwood is, is uh, deployed from their station at General George Patton Drive uh, for their 12 hours of service. And the other, we're currently uh, running out of the Beasley Drive complex, uh, a county property. But they pretty much pick up their unit and get on the road. And so we're constantly moving the units to areas where, for example, we know what the traffic patterns are on I-65, so we know that at a certain point it's good to have an ambulance in the area of Moore's Lane and I-65 to be able to go north or south and get there more quickly. And um, as, as an ambulance goes on a call, we, we bring more ambulances, we shift them around. So they're, they're already making the calls, but rather than having to wait for an ambulance to come all the way from a Triune or Hillsborough or Thompson Station or Grassland to come into Franklin to make a call, we're pre-deploying them. Um, along with that cooperative agreement, I would be remiss in not pointing out that the county in a cooperative arrangement with the Williams County Emergency Communications Board uh, operates the, uh, from the county's perspective, a consolidated uh, communication center. And they're the first <coughs> level. When you dial 911, the, the county folks answer the call. They are certified in what's called medical priority dispatch. So <coughs> they find out what's going on with the call. The, the uh, enhanced 911 pulls up the call location. And if there's anything, if someone has a known um, medical condition, they can notify the call center in advance and it'll come, come up when they dial 911 from that address uh, that they've got a certain type of condition. We may need lifting assistance, may need special equipment, uh, they may be uh, deaf or hard of hearing, uh, any number of things that to give us the tools to be able to serve them better. To let you catch your breath a yes. second. <laughs> um, I was sitting there and I am reminded of several people telling me and being involved at Williamson Medical Center myself personally on the board uh, by virtue of being the mayor that oftentimes I've reminded that you could have a heart attack or stroke in your home and the difference of just a couple of minutes makes a huge difference in whether that individual lives or passes away. Yes it does. And our ambulances uh, are equipped with some very sophisticated equipment today. Yes, Just 25 are. years ago, <laughs> that equipment wasn't even in the hospital. <laughs> That's true. And today, <laughs> it's on it's on wheels and moving <laughs> around. Uh, I also know those ambulances are not cheap. No, they aren't. <laughs> uh, and the equipment that goes into them. And I'm not sure what your number is, how many people currently work at, uh, at the uh, with the with our ambulances, our drivers, and our EMTs, and et cetera, um, but it's an amazing number. It is. Well, starting in the communications center, the the county communications center has about 20 employees. That any of those are part of this process of getting the call, selecting the unit, and sending the closest available resources. Uh, the next tier would be the the county fire, and in some cases, law enforcement. Uh, some of the the police cars, we tend to forget that too. The, the police officers, some, some of them are CPR trained and carry the automatic defibrillator with them. Um, but we have a total of about 400 first responders between the city and volunteer agencies, uh, combined agency as well uh, in Fairview. Um, and then you get to the ambulance and, and currently the, the county's EMS has 100 
full time or full and part time employees that are part of the staffing of the. Uh, we have a total of 16 ambulances, and at any given time, just in our normal scheduling, we'll have um, nine of them are on the road 24 hours a day and uh, then two are on 12-hour shifts and sometimes we'll staff things like the county fair which is coming up I believe or the rodeo which is coming up I believe. Uh, it's always something going there, on. There's in always county. something going on. Uh, so we may staff an extra ambulance or we have a, a bike medic team. Uh, we have uh, a cart that can we can deploy it uh, at certain events and it carries a stretcher and equipment and whatnot. Uh, but the ambulances themselves, as you know, we're, we're transitioning to uh, a, a really radical new design and it would take more than the balance of our time to go into a lot of the history in ambulances and, and changes. But uh, we've gone to a gasoline engine ambulance with solar panels on it and that reduces uh, our it, it reduces the fuel consumption because the solar panels are collecting even, we call them solar panels, but they actually collect light from anything. Uh, street lights, the canopies at hospitals produce some electricity through these, the lights in the garage do, and that helps charge all of these uh, systems that, that have the, the automatic vehicle location where there's a map displayed to show what the closest ambulance is. Uh, we have medicine compartments now that keep the medicines at a certain temperature and it keeps those uh, uh, where they, we know that they work uh, efficiently. Uh, there, there's just so many things that are in that ambulance now that, that weren't there before and it causes a lot of electrical issues. So that it keeps us from having to, to use so much gas. It, when you, whether it's gasoline or diesel, there's an electrical generator that's tied to that engine and when you've got all these warning lights and all these things going on in the ambulance, it, it idles the engine up higher to spin the alternator more to, to produce that electrical demand. So this just keeps us from using as much. It reduces our carbon footprint. We're, we're green in that respect. Uh, and it's just really a, a phenomenal change. You've mentioned a couple of uh, sentinel moments time in time that um, have kind of moved us from the 19th century to the 20th century <laughs> to the 21st century and I don't know that we'll ever get totally into the 21st century because things change just like our county continues to grow it's the fastest growing county in the state with about 45 percent uh, growth over a 10-year window and mm -hmm. all the forecasts are telling us we're going to double in population by the year 2035, 2040, 25 years away approximately and yet some of the basic things you do is being able to respond and get there is paramount that it was so important and the reason we got into it in the first place mm -hmm. is to take care of people in an emergency situation and deal with their needs either on the spot in the ambulance or on the way to the to the the, the hospital uh, whether that hospital the majority of your calls are to Williamson Medical Center but there are many that go uh, into the other facilities Right. But then about five years ago, a real effort has, uh, was being made, and uh, we put together some 40 or 50 people of which you were involved. It was a task force that was put together to, to study public safety in general, not just ambulances, not just 911, fire, but all of public safety, including uh, our cities our counties, many people watching this show would know that we've got a sheriff's department and a police department in most of our cities, certainly Brentwood and Franklin, Thompson Station, and um, some of our smaller cities uh, not necessarily have a full-fledged police department. Fairview does. Police chief runs the uh, law enforcement community inside those boundaries of Fairview. Right. <clears throat> but when you go to about 100,000 feet and you try to look at our, I don't know how many square miles we've got, that's 700? Does that sound <laughs> right? I don't know how many square miles. 534, Five, I believe, something like something. that. <laughs> uh, there's a lot of square miles in Williamson County, and a lot of that terrain is still hilly and rough. Not everything is flat and, and um, like we see in Brentwood and in, <laughs> in, in Franklin. But congestion, traffic, roads, 
everything has to be taken into consideration. And during this five-year window, in which you were involved, FEMA was involved, TEMA was involved, uh, other agencies from city, which is unique that we could get all those people mm -hmm. there together to discuss for well over, I think the process was well over a year and a half, if I remember, it might have been yes. closer to two years. And then in May of 2010, we had another Sentinel <laughs> event that will be written in the history books and that we had a major flood to come through the Middle Tennessee area. And we were on the backside of this task force. I never will forget it. <laughs> and we were trying to handle some of these things. But that task force had already united many men and women that were going to be faced with a lot of these issues that we had to be faced with on that long, laborious weekend of the flood. Yes. Not that those men and women didn't know who they were, but some of those things have been discussed during that task force. And out of that, like so many things that happen, as devastating as and as um, hard of, of a time we had during that flood for those three or four days and the after <clears throat> effects, out of that came a renewed interest, a, another moment that, that time was set down that we need to address public safety on a countywide basis. Right. Ambulances, the attention to that, regardless of what had happened in the years gone, were all good stepping stones for where we need to go now. A couple of years after the, the flood, um, we are still dealing, I mean, four years later, we're still dealing with a lot of these issues, but we know now, in order to be able to serve Williamson County, Franklin, Brentwood, Nolensville, Spring Hill Thompson Station, Fairview. We've got to have more of these, these being buildings and ambulances and people as our population continues to grow. Uh, I would say approximately 50% of our calls today are within Franklin. Yes. Where the population is. Right. But as time goes on, our county residents that live in the f f nice homes, beautiful subdivisions, they want that same attention. They certainly do. And they deserve it. The problem is, you've hit the nail on the head, is in, in our rural areas, that is serviced by volunteers, men and women who give up their time. Oftentimes, you've been on that end of the spectrum too, you've given back to your community in College Grove. But many of those fire calls are serviced by men and women that have a full time with someplace else. Right. We're not there yet, but we're getting there as far as, far as providing better services. We've got lots of, of um, hurdles to, uh, to clear uh, from city county relationships, working out issues that need to be addressed fire services, memorandums of understanding, <laughs> uh, first response, all of these terms. And at the end of the day, all that the Joneses and the Smiths care about, whether they're in the city or in the county, is do I have adequate medical attention? And number two is how long is it going to take to get out there? And number three, if I have a fire, not necessarily in this order, how are we going to respond to that? And you've done a masterful job over the period of time. I thank uh, Williamson Medical Center uh, for pouring in money and resources and the direction, different leaders over the period of time. But the attention is there. I respect the different city agencies that have a full-time job. They have to balance budgets just like you do, just right. like I do, trying to figure out what's best for their city and what's best for our community and what's best ultimately though for our individual respective homeowners and businesses. But uh, I suspect we'll see many more changes in your arena over the next few years and in public safety. Oh, there, there's no doubt. Uh, the, the reality is, is that challenges that we face make us better. And I, I think that's part of what has made Williamson County and the cities within 
uh, excellent and Williamson Medical Center and, and every, everybody that's involved in this community is that people bring these diverse needs in and you know you can fix anything if you can throw enough money at it but uh, you can also uh, focus so much on the stuff that you don't you're never going to improve something if you're always getting everything you want when you want it so uh, that that's how we learn that's how we grow that's how we develop and that's uh, uh, that's that's the way life is, and I, I see these as opportunities rather than looking at oh no, this is a challenge. What are we going to do? Uh, we have the right people in the right places to sit down and say, you know, let's look at the opportunities that exist in this and make a better product out of what we have to, to provide. Well, and and we go to so many levels of services that government is really expected to provide. Um, we've got a couple of minutes left in our show, and I certainly want to come back to you and, and ask if I've overlooked anything, but law enforcement, police protection, um, roads, um, the basic services that we provide to the citizens every day that they've come to expect it. Could you provide it through a, a for-profit model? Absolutely. You certainly can. Many, many cities around us have that for-profit model that uh, the ambulance service is not quite as sophisticated or as equipped. Uh, not that it's bad. Right. It's not that it's bad. But the model we've chosen for our citizens, and it's another one of those quality of life issues that nobody says, I wonder what kind of ambulance service they've got <laughs> in the community when they move here. They're going to talk about the schools and like that. But once they get here and they need that ambulance, and the need, the dedicated men and women that you've got in your leadership and the Williamson Medical Center's commitment and this county's commitment, it's there for them. I got one minute left to go. They're mm -hmm. flashing it up. What have <laughs> I right. overlooked? Well, I, I don't think you've overlooked anything. Uh, but what you mentioned, there are a number of places that are doing that now, and I'm hearing from uh, particularly out of North Carolina, but just yesterday I was talking to an EMS director in another county, and they just brought an industry in that one of the requirements of coming into that community was that there be uh, fire and ambulance stationed on the campus of that uh, factory, I believe, or warehouse. Uh, so people are looking more at that, and it's just a matter of how we will provide the services. There, we, we've got to provide the services, and we have to find a way to do it. And speaking of I've got to, i got to shut us off. All right. Thanks for being with us. Alan Lovett, director out at the ambulance over at Williamson Medical Center, our entire county, a dedicated man, Williamson County, <laughs> born and raised here, running, overseeing 100 different men and women and a whole bunch of expensive equipment. Thanks for being with us. Thank you for having me, sir. I'm Roger Sanderson. See you around the next time. Have a good day. On narrow roads like this, cyclists should leave at least two car lengths in between riders. That way the cars have room to get in between the cyclists and pass them individually. If the lane is too narrow or if the cyclists are traveling pretty much the same speed as traffic, then the cyclists have the right to come out and take the lane. Stay safe and have fun. And most of all, enjoy the ride.